there, when you see all of these pictures of you know the the army offensive against uh, the Hamas and Gaza Strip, and knowing that Roni is still there, what are your thoughts right now? It's been over three weeks. I have to tell you that we don't know. We don't know anything. We don't know where she is. We don't know if she's dead or alive. We don't know if she's hurt. We don't know if they're still in, in Gaza. We do trust our government and IDF to do the best that they can to first bring everyone from our families back home. But we understand that this situation cannot go on. Hamas, ISIS must be eliminated. They're monsters. They're, they're creatures of the night that only, I don't know, only a Nazi mind could imagine. What happened on October 7th in Israel territory was a genocide, a genocide in Israeli people. Monsters came from the night, from the darkness, and stole babies as young as nine months old and as old as 86 years old from their beds, butchered them, molested them, did horrible things that no no mind and no soul should take a look. And the footage that you've been showing now um, of the hostages and, and Pul Shani are just heartbreaking. And you need to understand that in the process of looking for information about Roni, my Roni, my niece, this is what I had to do, to just find a glimpse of her face. Is that her fingernails? Is that her nose? Is this her cilia? I had to watch this snuff, this horrible snuff movies that Hamas ISIS has published in everywhere from, from their phones, from people's phones, from their channels. And, and I tell you, these sites will scar your mind, will scar your soul, and will never let you sleep as a mother and as a citizen of this world that does not believe in terror again safely. There is no mother in Israel that is not awake, even if you'll call her at 2 p.m. We are all awake and worried. Wani, we last heard from Wani on October 7th at 9.27 exactly. She's a soldier at IDF, and you might imagine her as a superwoman or a Rambo uniform and such, but she's a 19 years old girl who loves Taylor Swift and Harry Styles and, and to travel. And she has a dog named Doobie and they would cuddle for hours together. And she's someone's daughter and she's someone's niece and she's someone's granddaughter and she's someone's sister and we miss her. And we don't know what happened to her. And we don't know if she's dead or alive. And we don't know if she was burned so badly that she's unrecognizable. And we don't know if she was... <laughs> we, we, we think that she's been abducted, but you saw what they do to women. And the testimonies are keep coming out. And there are six other lookouts, female soldiers that are missing from that base that these monsters, Hamas, ISIS, burned to the ground, burned to the ground. So we certainly don't trust them to hold our soldiers who are our daughters and sisters to hold them well and alive and, and not in tortures and in fear. And we, we ask you, we ask you and, and your viewers and your audience and, and, and people of India and citizens of the world, there's no two narratives, there's only one narrative. The narrative is not Israel against the Palestinians or against Hamas. The narrative is Hamas ISIS is against their own people. They're blocking the roads with trucks so civilians can't escape when IDF declares to evacuate. They use them as human shields. They have tunnels under the hospitals. If you don't believe in terror and you suffer, you know terror in your country, you know what it is. If you don't believe in violence and in terror, you can you just can't say free Palestine. You can say free Palestine from Hamas. This is the only narrative. You and know, we Tara, need you. Since you, since we you, need you to support us. Since you mentioned people who are talking about free Palestine, uh, there were some 
images we saw from across the world, especially on campuses and universities, where there were students who were tearing off posters of those who are hostages, those who are missing. The fear in these campuses, they say, is that this is spreading an anti-Palestine. These posters are spreading an anti-Palestine narrative and, you know, almost Islamophobia. How would you react? I would say that it comes from ignorance. It comes from people who believe that they're um, that they're woke, that they um, are pro-Palestine because they know maybe so little about what's happening. And the fact is that unless you say free Palestine from Hamas, you say nothing. And if you justify it, 30 beheaded babies and children and burned children and parents and, and chopped bodies like it's Halloween or a game or, or, or ni 1942, then you have a problem. You have a problem. You're not in a straight mind. That This would not free anyone from anything. This is terror. And when you go in universities and you're against Israel and you're against Jewish people and you don't understand even the conflict, have you ever been? Have you ever been to Israel? Have you been to Gaza? You know, all the Hadid family, Bella Hadid and whatever. Has she ever stepped foot in this area? No, she just feels very uh, engaged and woke to say free Palestine, but she doesn't understand for, to free Palestine from who? From terror, from Hamas, ISIS. Hmm.